I'm going to talk with another artist this morning who has an exhibit taking place at the Gingerbread Square Gallery. He's another incredible artist known as John Whitney. Now John comes to us from Sarasota. He's a graphics artist. He's also a painter in watercolor and oil. John's work is very popular. His collection is found all over the world, from Germany to Egypt, even in Guatemala. John, thank you so much for being on this morning. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> it's a delight to be here. Well, it's a delight having you here. I am a fan of your work, John, and it sounds like so many other people are a fan of your work. Your collections are found throughout the world. Yeah, yeah I'm very fortunate, very lucky to have uh, the work being exhibited and shown and, and collected by so many people. Mm -hmm. And we're lucky, very fortunate to have you here at the Gingerbread Square Gallery mm -hmm. right now. Your exhibit is up. Tell us about some of the pieces that we'll see in the exhibit. Um, my work is emotion-based and uh, so it's, it's kind of a psychological study instead of a, a realistic perspective. So um, the, the art is um, drawn from basically from the inside out. So, so instead of painting first the exterior and trying to put emotion into it, I put the emotion in and then come back to the exterior. Okay. So that description is the last description to put in. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually the, the work starts as a total abstraction and then, uh, and then works out toward the the actual figurative part of it. All my work is figurative based. It's all, the emotion is easiest to state because if you can relate to it as a person. Mm -hmm. And so uh, rather than just doing it as colors and, and movement, you can also create it by how the person feels in a given situation. And so that's the essence of what I'm trying to do. Uh, uh, from when I'm a child, uh, I have had um, various artists work with me because my father was in WPA and, and my aunt ran the uh, design department at the University of Kansas. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, we had lots of artists come through the house and, and uh, train me mm -hmm. from when I was a little kid. And so, um, and basically the training is off of a Blue Rider movement that was very popular back at the turn of the last century. And uh, one of the Blue Riders taught at the University of Kansas and uh, taught both my father and my aunt. So um, because of that, th that's where I get my emotion base in the art. Mm -hmm. And it's very, uh, very, it's an excellent descriptive media because it has lots of color to it, mm -hmm. lots of, uh, of, of descriptiveness in it mm -hmm. uh, that people can relate to. Mm -hmm. And then in my work, what I'm trying to do is trying to keep from describing it so much that I'm dictating the message. I want it to be able to feed off of the viewer or the patron at differently on different days and so it will absorb the the energy and the uh, um, mood that the individual is in on that given day and then it will in turn be described slightly different you'll pick up on a different character in the in the piece mm -hmm. depending on what emotion you're feeling as a viewer mm -hmm. I like it, John. You take a little different approach then. Yeah, other. it's completely different mm -hmm. from what anybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you're doing a great job. With oh, it. thank <laughs> you. Do you paint every day, John? I do paint. Mm -hmm. I paint a lot. I, I, I have painted thousands of pictures. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know how many it is, somewhere between two and 3,000 pictures that wow. are all over everywhere. Now, yeah, you really mentioned... Fortunate. You, you are very fortunate. And you mentioned that you come from a family of artists. So did you feel pressure that you had to follow in their footsteps? No, actually, in childhood, you don't realize that, that what you're being shown, mm -hmm. all, the, all the studios that you're going through, various uh, 
really well-known artists, uh, studios that I have been invited into uh, and see their techniques and how they go about making their pigments and, and their paints and from scratch, actually. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, because of the time period that I span. And, uh, but all of this is done just as a daily life. It's not done as a demand that's put on somebody. Mm -hmm. So that basically is what, uh, what the way it feels. It's just a childhood, you know, you're, it's just a normal childhood right. in essence. Okay. Now, John, how long will your work be up at the Gingerbread Square Gallery? Well, it'll be up through this show, which will be uh, probably a couple of weeks, and mm -hmm. then, and then uh, probably be viewed throughout the summer parts of it. Great. And you yeah. come down to Key West twice a year, correct? Twice a year, okay. yeah, and bring new work. Well, good. So you'll always be able to see new work at Gingerbread Square Gallery. Good. Keep bringing that new work. Okay. <laughs> John, thank you for being on this morning. Thank you. <laughs> Definitely it's a delight. By. Thank you. Definitely stop by the Gingerbread Square Gallery, see, see John's work along with Christos and Jane Washburn. I'm going to take a quick break right now, but I'll be right back after these messages with the Wine Cottage. Stay with me.